Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to run with. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Now, before we get into the top comment today, I kind of want to address some of the principles of this show. I've done it a few times, but every now and then we kind of lose our grounding here about what Loadout was actually designed to do, and that was to test different loadouts and see how tactically viable they are. Now there's been so many comments that are simply just troll comments, they get very high votings and then people get annoyed when I don't pick them. And simply I'm not trying to do this show to have you guys watch me get angry and upset with something because it's not working, you know, certain loadouts certainly don't work but they seem to have some sort of tactical element to them and that's generally why I pick them just to try them out and see if we can sort of figure out a cool niche for certain loadouts. So once again you guys are certainly welcome to post troll loadouts but if they don't have any sort of tactical element to them chances are I'm not going to pick those comments. Alright so today's top comment comes from Tim Davison he says Russian heavy gunner PKP Pechneg Cobra, folding grip, muzzle break, laser light combo, MP4-12. Try to use the high damage to your advantage by playing medium sized maps. Keep making great videos and I hope you pick mine. Now part of the reason I chose this comment was because I realized I really didn't have many videos talking about the PKP in Battlefield 4. I had one double vision I did with Matimio where we're shooting each other with the PKP, but I haven't actually done a gun review or any sort of loadout breakdown on this weapon, so certainly it's overdue because it is a very powerful machine. Machine gun. It's one of three machine guns that does that 34 damage maximum, allowing you to kill somebody with three shots in close quarters, which is pretty nice. The other two machine guns are the M60 and the M240 Bravo. It has a 600 round per minute rate of fire, meaning its damage per second is going to be almost on par with the Scar H. The Scar H shoots 620 rounds per minute, so you're going to have a very similar time to kill as the Scar. However, your aiming down sight accuracy and recoil is going to be way, way, way higher. It's going to be on machine gun levels. One cool thing about this though is that it does have a very low first shot recoil multiplier of 0.65. Not quite as low as the M240 Bravo or the M60 which make them a little bit better for tap firing. This is still a very good gun for that tap fire mechanic. So the folding foregrip on here or the angled foregrip which is what the loadout suggested is actually a very good way to run this machine gun and it allows you to tap fire to be very accurate at longer ranges. The muzzle brake in this loadout is also going to to further lend itself to reducing that vertical recoil which in theory would improve your tap firing mechanics but I don't know if it actually is worth the trade-off between accuracy the muzzle brake uh, increases your bullet bloom so it might actually hurt you a little bit more at longer range than you're hoping it depends how religious you are about tap firing this weapon if you're only tap firing then sure maybe the muzzle brake will be decent but if you start doing a few little bursts here and there then the muzzle brake could really throw off your accuracy quite a bit now as far as the laser light combo goes I didn't have it for the beginning of this loadout so I ran a laser sight instead and later switched to the laser light combo. Now I'll be honest I was turning off the laser sight a lot of the time that I had it equipped just because I felt like it was giving away my position more than it was helping me with my hip fire accuracy and that's been something that I've talked about a bit and it's something that I'm more strongly feeling that the laser sight is actually hurting your spot ability, basically making it easier for somebody to figure out where you're hiding or find you at a long distance, as opposed to improving your hip fire. I think ultimately it's a negative trade-off, but again, that's my personal opinion, and it also depends on your play style. Are you up close in people's faces all the time? Then you might want to use a laser sight. Considering that we're using the PKP and that uh, medium range is kind of the goal here, laser sight not too useful overall. Now because the PKP is a Russian made weapon dice allows you to unlock the cobra sight as one of the first red dot sites for this weapon you'll notice that in this game you unlock the US red dot site for American made weapons the Chinese red dot site which is the coyote site for Chinese made weapons and then the cobra sight for anything that is Russian made now for the most part this loadout is pretty workable I might switch out the muzzle brake for a flash hider ultimately and the laser light combo for a two times magnifier. And that's simply because there are a few situations every now and then where you're gonna want a tiny bit more accuracy. You're not gonna really need much more than two times magnification just because your gun is not gonna be that accurate. To take advantage of a four times optic, it might be a little bit overkill. You'll see here I'm gonna go prone and just start picking off people's feet with tap firing. 
If I had it two times optic here, I could be a little bit more accurate, miss a few more shots there, potentially pick up an extra kill or two. So this is one of the situations that it would be useful. I imagine I wouldn't use it very much, but every now and then you're gonna want it. Now let's compare the PKP to some of the other heavy hitting machine guns like the M60 and the 240 Bravo. If tap firing is your sole mission with this setup here, do not use the PKP. It unfortunately is gonna perform far worse than the other two. That is because the first shot recoil multiplier on this is 0.65, where the other machine guns have a first shot recoil multiplier of 0.5. This means that your vertical recoil and your side to side recoil is going to be multiplied a bit more with this weapon compared to the other two. So even though this one has lesser recoil overall than the other weapons, its first shot recoil is slightly higher. So that means tap firing is not going to be quite as good. If you want to just exclusively tap fire this gun, then I would highly recommend the 240 Bravo or the M60. So perhaps the PKP is not the ultimate tap firing setup out there. You can certainly use it that way and it will function that way, but if that is your ultimate goal, there are better options out there. Where the PKP does excel is a bit more versatility than the other weapons and a faster reload. It's got a set 5.5 second reload on this weapon compared to a much longer 6.2 and 7.8 seconds offered by its competing machine guns. Now taking a look at the gameplay here, I was playing on Rush Silk Road. This is a very hard map to play, especially with the machine gun because you're going to need extremely long range accuracy. So it's really all about sand dude head glitching on the first objective here and you just got to come over the sand dune just enough so you're only exposing the very top of your head and then take out your targets. Generally, you don't want to come around to the side of it, exposing your whole body, making yourself a bigger target. You want to take advantage of the fact that this particular setup is set well for tap firing, so you want to go for those headshots, getting that two-shot headshot takedown. Switching over to some Lumpini Garden playing on Obliteration, this game mode was really set up well for the PKP because it's mostly medium range. A little bit of long range every now and then, but really if you work your way around the map strategically, you can set yourself up for nothing but medium range targets and you're gonna get a lot of kills you're gonna do really well so remember medium range sticking close to the objectives don't get too far away from that railway there otherwise you're gonna get in sniper battles and you're gonna lose those most of the time because you just don't have the accuracy to deal with those people now the PKP can certainly handle itself in close quarters the 240 Bravo is perhaps a little bit better because it's got a slightly higher rate of fire but that's not to say that the PKP isn't gonna dish out a lot of damage per second especially if you got the drop on somebody. Plus that 100 round magazine, you can go through a whole squad of guys before you even need to think about reloading. Now unfortunately there were a ton of players on this obliteration map and it pretty much just turned into a stalemate. It's open enough to the point where if you've got a 64 player game and the bomb carrier is well spotted, it's just going to turn into tons of choke points and it doesn't look like it's a choke pointy map, but again with this many players it kind of reminds me of playing soccer when you're a little kid and every single kid on the field just runs towards the soccer ball there's no sort of positions or anything it just gets like total chaos so ultimately the pkp is a very safe lmg tap firing wise again go for a different machine gun otherwise you'll probably want to set this up for a general purpose lmg and you'll have a good time with it it's heavy hitting it's got a lot of ammo it's going to be a lot of fun to run with and that wraps it up for this episode of loadout guys thanks for watching don't forget to leave your comments for next week's episode and i'll see you next time this is level cap signing off